Joshua chapter 16. Still dividing the land off. And the lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jericho unto the water of Jericho on the east to the wilderness that goeth up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel and goeth out from Bethel to Luz and passes along the borders of Archai and Adaroth and goeth down westward to the coast of Japhthi unto the coast of Beth Horon the Neither and the Gezer and the goings out thereof are at the sea now if you're to lay this out in the map it could be the Mediterranean Sea or the Salt Sea I mean it's right in the middle Gezer so the children of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim, took their inheritance. Now remember, one half of the tribe of Manasseh went on the other side. The border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was this. Even the borders of their inheritance on the east side was Ataroth Adar, unto Beth Horam the upper. Well, we had in verse 3, Beth Horam the neither. Now we got Beth Horam the upper. There's two of them, two places. One's higher than the other. And the border went out toward the sea to Methia on the north side. And the border went about eastward unto Timnath and passed by on the east to Janoth. And it went down from Janoth to Artoth and to Naroth and came to Jericho and went out at the Jordan. So we know where we are, basically. Now, the land doesn't go all the way to the Mediterranean Sea and back to the Jordan. And you can find maps online. The border went out of Tem Teptoch, westward unto the river Kana, and the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim by their family. And the separate cities for the children of Ephraim were among the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. So there's a lot more than what was named with villages. I mean, if God would put the name of all the villages and all the places, I mean, the Bible would be a chunk full of, of reading. John said, if we were to record everything that Jesus done, man, you would need a track of trailer to, to carry your Bible. Your gospel would be her mongers. And yet, here we see Jesus here. There is so much, we just say, okay, villages. And they drive out, I mean, they drive not out the Canaanites that dwell in Gezer. So, again, it's not obeying the word of God. But the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites unto this day. And serve unto tribute. Now that Gazir is kind of interesting because if we were to go back as a family where we read our Bible today, First Kings chapter nine, verse fifteen, we something we see something quite interesting here. First Kings nine fifteen. <laughs> And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised for to build the house of the Lord, and his own house, and Milo, and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hazor, Hazor, and Megiddo, and Gezer. Now, how close is Gezer? And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Gezer and burnt it with fire, slain the Canaanites. That dwelt in the city. Oh! Are you telling me that in Joshua it said stay in king, but it says the Canaanites dwelt in the land in chapter 16 of Joshua? You mean to tell me, jo Joshua, the end of the book, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, King. I can't think of his name now. King Saul. King David. King Solomon. They have not ever gotten rid. Because watch. 
For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, going up, taking Gezer and burnt him with fire and slain the Canaanites. It was the Egyptians that went and killed the Canaanites, not the men of Israel, like God told them. Isn't that quite interesting? So let's keep reading. That dwelt in the city and gave it for a present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. Wasn't it already Israel's, according to Joshua, that the king of, of, of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, came and conquered the city, killed the Canaanites, and he gave it back to Solomon? What happened? Canaanites take over it? The king of Egypt went in and conquered the Canaanites, and he gave it to Solomon as a present for, his wife, for Solomon's wife, which is his daughter. And Solomon built Gezer. Well, that's kind of interesting. What happened there? Why didn't they take the Canaanites out? And then why is the king of Egypt giving it back to Israel? It was already Israel's land, according to Joshua. And that's not the end of the story. First Kings chapter 9, verse 21. 20, verse 20. Verse Kings 10, 20. And all the people that were left of the Amorites. You heard that name before? Hittites. You heard that name before? Perizzites. Hivites. And Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel. Their children that were left after them in the land. Whom the children of Israel also were not able utterly to destroy. Upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto... See, we can't conquer them, but let's tax them and let's put them to work. Do you know about the Amorite, the Hivite, Parasites, Hivites, Jebusites, what it is said in the law? You were to go in that land and you were to totally wipe them out. All right, so we've gone from Joshua. We've gone through all the judges, including Samuel. King Saul, King David, King Solomon, and they're still in the land that God said you were supposed to wipe them out. And what's going to happen to King so Solomon? He does not get rid of them. So let's turn our Bibles to chapter 11. And let's see if God's right by getting rid of those people. Chapter 11, 1 Kings, chapter 11, verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Now that don't mean they had antennas and weird eyeballs or anything like that. Let's see what strange is. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Amorites, Edomites, Zionites, Hittites. Now where have we seen that name before? Well, let's keep reading. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in unto them. Neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. But Solomon clave unto them in love. All right. So let's see what happens even more. Verse 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart from other gods, and his heart it was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Now let's read. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the gods of the Zidonians. I thought you were supposed to destroy all that. Images and pictures. And after Malcolm, the abomination of the Amorites. I thought they were supposed to be killed. I thought you were supposed to destroy their images and idols. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build in high place for Chemish, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem. So here is Jerusalem. Here is the temple that Solomon built, and he builds a place, a high place, for a fallen god. And for Molech, the abomination of children of Ammon. And likewise he did for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. You didn't get rid of them. 
Now they are co-joined. They are unity. They've had this fellowship together. They are much married into the church. They got unity of the fallen gods. And the nation is destroyed. And God says, I'm going to send somebody. I'm going to destroy that kingdom. I'm going to separate into two. Because they kept the people in the land where God told you, don't keep them in the land. Now watch this with Solomon, chapter uh, 9, 1 Kings 9. And what I'm going to read here, you got to remember about King Uzziel, uh, Uzzah, the king with the leprosy. The king of the leprosy, Uzzah, is going to do exactly what we're reading here, but God allows it for Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 25. Three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar which he built unto the Lord, and he burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord. Solomon is walking up to the altar. He's burning the animals, his sacrifice on that altar. He is going into the holy place. He's burning incense upon that brazen, I mean, upon that golden altar. And God's not killing him, and God's not striking him with, with uh, leprosy like he did Uzzah. Because Solomon's heart right now is right with God. He's, he's built the temple. And God says, go. Of the love of, of David and the love I have for you, go and become a king priest. And he's also a prophet. Uzzah tries that, and he gets leprosy. And he's separated from the kingdom. And they bury him outside of anybody. And they find a note at his gravesite. I think it's they can't read it. They don't understand. But it's pretty much to say, warning, don't touch this grave. This man has leprosy. Died of leprosy. So when we go back to Joshua. And we're 16. And then 1563. And the Jebusites inhabited Jerusalem. The children of Israel could not drive them out. Chapter 16, verse 10. They couldn't drive out the Canaanites. We're going to see this in Joshua. And it's going to plague the nation of Israel. Even all the judges. Samuel. King Saul. King David. King Solomon. And all the kings into Jerusalem is sacked by the Babylonians. And they're going to go to Babylonia. And when Ezra comes back, Ezra finds out they're picking up the gods of the Babylonians. They've married strange wives like Solomon. The guy rips his clothes, sits in sackcloth, he's ashes, and he's pulling his hair and his beard out for the sin and the wickedness of the people. And what were you to don't read your Old Testament. It's, no, you know what you learn from the Old Testament? You better get rid of those sins. You better get rid of what God tells you to do. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, Solomon is going to reap. And Jeroboam and Rehoboam and all the kings of Israel. Not one king ever gets right. Now, there are right kings in Judah. And it's going to get to the point God says, okay. Manasseh, I mean, the half tribe Manasseh, Reuben, and Dan, you're out of here. You're the first ones. You didn't obey me. Israel, you made those golden calves. You're out of here. Judah, you're, you know what? You've angered me so much. I'm going to change the name of your king to Kaniah. I'm going to take off the J-E. I am removing Jehovah off your name. And world, oh, earth, oh, earth, oh, earth, right this man childless. That the fact is that when my son comes, he has to be born of a virgin. I am so angry with you guys. And there'll be a period without no king. And then when Israel does, when Israel is all gathered together and Jesus comes as king, they reject him, put him on the cross. And they say Isaiah 53 is them today, and the one that's per, the one that pers persecuting them in Isaiah 53 is the Gentiles. Man, when God says, get that sin out of your life, when God says, confess, clean, and deal with it, you better. You better. Look at the children of Israel. 
You want to study. Study 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Jeremiah, uh, uh, Ezra, I mean Ezekiel. And if you don't see America in those books and what God does to, to Judah, if you think God is going to spare America, he would have to apologize to every inhabitant of Judah when Babylon came in three times and destroyed that city. America is keeping the gods. Israel is keeping the gods that God says, hey, don't have anything to do with it. Look at the mess Solomon's in. And that guy was in the holy place. And you can't say, oh, I'm so holy, I'm so good, you can't fall. Look at the state that Solomon was in. In the holy place, and next thing you know, years later, he's got every god on his mantle. He's building things for gods. You can fall. You can get wrong. You can get wrong. You can fall by not dealing with the sins. Solomon's problem was he did not listen to the word of God. You know Israel's problem here? They're not listening to the word of God. They God told them, these people, you drive out. Burn their images. Burn their idols. Or the whole nation will get in a mess.